Hi, this is Craig Severance from the Zero Energy Channel. Come join us as we work to address the challenge of moving toward a world with zero energy from fossil fuels. The next step is cutting, measuring and cutting the 45 degree angle rafters, which are the most of them. And those are pretty darn precisely drawn according to the way the dimensions actually ended up in the SketchUp drawing. So taking some measurements off of how that is in the SketchUp drawing, including the bird's mouth notch, which ends up being, of course, 45 degrees angles and a 90 degree at its notch and three and a half and three and a half. And, and that's three inches from the end. I have to measure how long the total board is here. And we're gonna try that with a couple of them and see how that lines up well with the actual construction. For the end that uh, is meeting the ridge beam, you, we, for this uh, particular rafter uh, set, we have a 45 degree angle, which your square is perfectly designed to mark uh, without even any real calculations. And, and your miter saw then, is going to be able to be adjusted to whatever angle you need to cut that end. Here's an example of a 45 degree after that we're cutting to uh, before we put it in. Now on the end you can see on the near end is the 90 degree angle that's off the side of the trailer and then at the other end is the 45 degree angle where it meets the ridge beam. Now cutting the knot, which is not that hard. It's going to probably require, as I've found, using a handsaw of some sort because if anything mechanical is just probably too aggressive for such a detailed cut. You might have figured, well, a jigsaw would work, but uh, the uh, I'm using the jab saw. I just like the feel of it. But uh, we're cutting these and then we set them into place. I already put a couple pair in yesterday and they fit. I'll show you those. Of course, showing you anything under this tarp is difficult, but we have the end, um, the two rafters on the end here, but not the actual end of the roof, but because that's after the soffit is on, but the end of the building. The ones that match the end of the building are here and the first one was a struggle and the second one dropped right into place which was really gratifying. Now we're going to try a couple more. We're starting here on this end because the ridge beam isn't very twisted here and hopefully as we come across the rafters coming against each side of it will start to take its twist out. That's the hope. Let's talk a little bit about what you're going to tie these rafter ends to the walls with. Yeah, sure, you might try to toenail them, but my goodness, you end up splitting them and breaking them. And, and uh, if you think that's strong, these are the tails where you end up having people having the roofs blow off if you just toenail that to the wall. So they have these things called the hurricane straps. On the end here, you're probably going to have to use the twisted thin one like we did here because there isn't any room for the two-sided one. And then, of course, you see here to the left of that where our second roll of rafters, we're using the two-sided hurricane straps, and those work real well. Now you're setting these things in, what do you set first. Well, we're, we're just sort of setting the rafter in place and tying it to the top ridge beam with a couple of screws and then you've got to get those notches to come in and come up against the wall because they tend to want to splay out and be hanging half an inch off the wall. So, you, But it's, it's been pretty easy to just shove it into where it's touching the wall and then put uh, the sideways fasteners through the crane strap to hold it there and then we're doing the final connections up at the peak after we make sure that it's not splaying out past the wall with the notches so that's working pretty well. 
Okay, and a little bit of what Eric calls MacGyvery, we had to get the twist out of this ridge beam and we just couldn't push, push on the rafters hard enough to make the rafters do it. So we hooked the strap here with a little bit of a come along feature to a lag bolt that we put at the top, uh, near the top of the ridge beam and pulled it down. We hooked that down where the foundation uh, underneath the trailer to one of the uh, lag bolts that's holding the trailer to the foundation. I loosened it a little bit and put the other end of the strap on it. And we have then used the little come along and straightened this out quite a bit, taking the twist out of the ridge beam so that we can actually put the rafters where they're supposed to be. Okay, so we, we finished the uh, first section of 45 and we're going to be into the dormer roof next coming across on the ridge beam and we have to come across as we're taking out that twist although we did use the the, the pulling it to help a lot with that but I'm just going to keep coming across we have to figure out the dormer angle because we changed everything we changed the height of the dormer wall which of course changes the angle so my SketchUp design no longer is accurate I played around with it in SketchUp a bit, but it's difficult to move those, rotate those around. Did a by hand here a piece of graph paper. I will. I'm not going to say simple geometry, but it's geometry, and you have to figure out the rise and the run. And it's funny the roofers know this all the time. It would have been nice if they told us in geometry class that this stuff has a practical application. But the we have a rise for the dormer roof of 11 inches over a horizontal run of 50 inches, which you can go online and have an angle calculator tell you what angle that is. It's a rise angle of 12.4 degrees, which is going to be helpful. And we plotted this out basically we're going to need to make that 12.4 degree angle at the end where it meets the ridge beam there's a 12 point there's the notch and the opposite side of the 12.4 and that uh, triangle is a the uh, 77 6 but that's not the angle on the board of the notch it's going to be the rest of the 180 degrees so we need 102.4 angle coming up to make the notch we're notching over top of a two by four so it has to go up one and a half inch come across three and a half and then back down so so that's our calculation that's our rafter math we're trying we're going to cut the length of the board based upon the drawing here from that is from the peak of the from the end to the peak with six inches coming off the sides to match the lower level that should be about 57 and a quarter inches long that's how long we're going to cut our boards and then work on the 12.4 degree angle here on this end and installing the notch on that end and we're going to see if this fits of course, the, this is uh, that 12.4 degree uh, where we're cutting off the end where it's going to meet the ridge beam. And that's just a measurement we've made based upon the numbers. We're coming in 1 and 3 16 inches on the one side and drawing the line. And then, of course, to actually cut this really, really helps. To have the miter saw's ability to precisely change the angle over to say 12.4. Okay, so well that one was too short by about an inch, so I should have cut to the SketchUp, playing around in SketchUp dimensions I got first because it said it was going to have to be about an inch longer. So now we're doing that. Well, that uh, adding about an inch and a and a quarter added 
to the length it solves our problem and as they're fitting now so we're producing a few the key thing here on this knot is if you're going over two by four wall you are going over a two by four wall and so you're creating a notch that's made to go over an inch and a half one way and three and a half inches the other and be square when it's in the notch and if you get that in your mind you're not gonna have any trouble with this and you can see what he's doing here that's what we're creating is that goes up at the angle 102 degree angle um, uh, off the board which actually if you just figure out the math we're measuring that on each side and drawing a line and that's a lot easier than trying to draw an angle each time and and that ends up being for instance you know five and eight inch in on one on the one near side here and six and a quarter inches in from the end on the other side and we just draw that line and it's at the right angle and then uh, come down that inch and a half and then you make a, a square corner and go three and a half inches the other way using your square and then you just uh, and the little stub end there is the what's left to, of the notch and but that you are going over a two by four so you're creating a space for the two by four to fit in there so that really helps well we're doing these dormer rafters and the rough measurements we made uh, with the graph paper and figuring out the angle and the calculations we're only about an inch off and it turns out doing the same sort of thing exercise playing it around in SketchUp drawing that out was actually more accurate but if you don't have SketchUp and you do have to do the graph paper if we hadn't had anything other than what we started with we would know that we could adjust it by about an inch which is what we did and it will fit so the graph paper method will work it really really helps to start with something that's really close to being right and then if you're just a little bit off you can actually see that but when you're dealing with thinking about a thing hanging up in the middle of the air um, and that's hard you have to pretty much try to plan this out ahead of time and get close Okay, this is an example where the uh, dormer roof here that's closest to us, the shallow roof, ends and the 45 degree roof begins. And you can see the two rafters are right up next to each other and you can't put two of the brackets to hold the, the uh, rafter hangers next to each other. So, which seems like a problem at first and you're going to have to to go through the other side but the other thing about this though is you can put screws through the weaker rafter the one that doesn't have the rafter hanger and into the other one so it ends up being stronger actually so it, it's not a, a real problem and and it's just one of these things that uh, uh, was thinking about and fretting about a little bit and then when you actually do it it's not that bad Well, let me just say this has been one of the most beautiful September days and to be able to be working on your own house and look out at the countryside and what a glorious day and we're getting it done. Okay so we're starting the fascia boards which means we've got all the main rafters up and the only rafters left are going to be supported on their bottom ends by fascia boards. So. All these rafters and the force, of course, the fascia boards themselves are going to show. So we're using cedar now, and it's pricey. One of the things that uh, it's going up nice and straight, which and since I know I bought absolutely straight fascia boards, checking that out at the lumber yard with the floor lines on the floor, that means the building's pretty straight, which is a really good sign that it's coming straight across the rafters. If you get to the end of the board and you're really close to that end and you do not pre-drill as you see on that top screw there if you do not pre-drill as you see on this top screw here you're gonna split that board so obviously 
I said, oh darn. Well, uh, so this bottom one I pre-drilled, and we're gonna have to do that every time we near near the end of a board. The cedar is just too too delicate. So, also the one rafter that came out crooked is where this is ending. So you see that's not lining up exactly right, but we're gonna cover it up. So all the others are lining up real nice. If you look carefully at these, you can see they're not actually rafters, they're rafter ends for bringing the fascia across the bottom of the dormer. See, they don't go anywhere. And when you draw these out in the plans, they look real complicated, but once you've got a bunch of rafter notches and stuff, you realize, oh, this isn't complicated at all. And uh, so, we just went the three inches from the end and did a 45 and that was it. See the rafter ends go over here on either side of the dormer, uh, on, the, on either side of the window under the dormer, but they don't go under the window because it, the window is low enough that that would interfere with the window, which is fine. In fact, I think we'll put some railing there for climbing out of the window as a fire escape, something to hang on to. So that'd be good to have on each side instead of the fascia. Of course, you see that we've caught clamps on here. That's for the when we first started doing rafters, we kept splitting off the the uh, the knot, the ends off past the notch, because it's redwood we're using for rafters, and it's real soft, and those notches are real delicate. So we saved them. Now we're gluing them back on and holding them in with clamps, and then putting that back so face on the end, so it'll all look right. We have the two fascia boards on either side coming in they are sticking out the same distance that the ridge beam is sticking out there at the top so if you look at the top in the middle you have the ridge beam and on either end on the sides you have these fascia sticking out and the so the ridge beam cap rafters are going to be cedar and they're going to be on the end of the ridge beam halfway on each of them halfway on that beam and then coming out and being supported on their bottoms by the fascia and very precise I don't I think what we're going to do is just make a 45 degree cut place it on the ridge beam and mark it where it actually intersects the fascia and then make the cut I just can't imagine getting it right otherwise well that method actually worked extremely well it's fitting perfectly it, we, we drew a line down the middle of the ridge beam and that's where we're placing the end of this for with the 45 and then we measured to where um, over on the side here where it ended up needing to be resting on the fascia board got that cut precisely and it fit precisely so here's a shot that shows both the front uh, uh, cedar edge rafters and uh, cedar edge rafters and fascia on the dormer so we've now finished all of that last uh, pieces of rafter hanging including the fascia and the dormer cedar end rafters but this then means that we have finished our framing of the main house we still have to do the battery box but we can put the roof on now hello my name is eric if you like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. Also, if you want to subscribe, that's good too. Join us on the Zero Energy channel.